Okay, today we're doing section 3.5. I'm choosing this year to do this after sections 3.1 and 3.2 because I think it um, might be a better option. So in our ISM, we're on page 10, and we're going to talk about the perpendicular transversal, transversal theorem. It says if a line is perpendicular to one of two lines, then it is perpendicular to the other. So in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other. So we're going to draw our own little picture. Make two parallel lines, please. And because we don't draw perfectly, I'm going to call these lines A and B. Let's make a symbol on there, which is a little arrow, to indicate we meant for these to be parallel. My pen is not being as cooperative as normal today. It's kind of acting a little squirrely, but we can do it. And then I'm going to draw another line through there that's hitting at a right angle. I'm going to call that line C. And I'm going to only put a box for showing that line C is perpendicular to line A. Okay, so this description now hopefully will fit the theorem, make you understand what the theorem is saying. What it says is that if line A is parallel to line C, oh my gosh, I just wrote parallel. I wrote the wrong, oh my gosh, I got distracted. If line A is parallel to line, okay, start over. If A is perpendicular to C, And, and I could have said, and A is parallel to B, but I want to be uh, say it exactly how this is saying it. So if line A is perpendicular to line C, and A is parallel to B, then C must be perpendicular to line B also. Okay, so I don't want to draw the right angle there, but that would be the case. There would be a right angle here, but this is the picture that I can say, if A perpendicular to C and A parallel to B, then I know that C must be perpendicular to B as well. <laughs> the N on the word then. All right, the second one. Corresponding angles, converse postulate. Now, you can write course angles, converse, for your reason, but I'm going to write them out in a short version that says, if two lines are cut by a transversal, so the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So it's with parallel at the end instead of at the beginning. So what it would look like is corresponding angles congruent implies parallel lines. I will allow us to abbreviate it as short as this. This really says if corresponding angles are congruent, then parallel lines. I'm going to allow you to write corresponding angles congruent, then parallel. So in this diagram, if you saw this picture and you saw angle 2 congruent to angle 6, then you would know that since corresponding angles are congruent, then lines J and K are parallel. So it's the converse of the corresponding angles theorem. The parallel postulate is, says that if there's a line and a point not on the line, then there is exactly one line through the point that would be parallel to the given line. Now, this is a picture of it, so let me explain. You don't have to write what I'm about to write. If you have a line and you have a point not on it, how many lines you can draw through this point that would be parallel to this? It is just one. There's only one. That's all it's saying. Okay. So if you have a line and a point not on the line, there's only one line you can draw that would be parallel to that one. That's what this is illustrating. The alternate interior angles converse. ALT, you can write it like this. Alt interior angles converse but you're going to have to write the word converse if you do that. 
otherwise, what it says is, if two lines are cut by a transversal so that the alternate interior angles are congruent, these are alternate interior angles, four and five, then the lines would be parallel. So the abbreviation I'll use most of the time, I don't tend to write alternate, alternate interior angles converse, but that is certainly what this is. You can say alt interior, oops, my pen is really hard to write with today. Alternate interior angles congruent implies parallel lines. That's why we'll abbreviate it. The next one is alternate exterior angles converse, which could be abbreviated alt interior angles converse, if you want to write it that way. Or it says if two lines are cut by a transversal, so the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. The short version that I will tend to use is alt and I wrote interior. Oh my gosh, I'm just doing a bad job. What's that supposed to be? EXT, not INT. Please correct that before I do it again. I guess. I didn't do this last, uh, first hour. I don't know what's wrong with me. My ultimate exterior angles congruent implies parallel lines. Now up here on the alternate interiors, if you want to highlight in the backwards Z or S, you may if you like. Don't really have to, but that's where they are. And these little guys are on the outside. They don't make a letter. All right, next. Consecutive interior angles converse. You can abbreviate CONS, INT, angles, converse. Which says if two lines are cut by a transversal, so the consecutive interior angles are supplementary, which of course means add to 180, then the lines are parallel. So if three and five are supplementary angles, then J would have to be parallel to K. The short version, CONS, interior angles supplementary, SUPP, implies arrow parallel. Of course, that means parallel lines. Oh, you had to turn the page. We're on page 11. Okay, so again, these add to 180. So, for example, if angle 3 was 60, angle 5 would be 120. If angle 3 was 70, angle 5 would be 110. Numbers that add to 180. All right, perpendicular transversal converse. In a plane, if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel. Short version, two lines, perpendicular, it's not really too short, to same line, Um, I'll put an arrow for that part instead of writing the word R. Implies parallel. Let's make a little picture. And I'm, we've been always writing our hor parallel lines horizontally. Let's do them vertically this time. So if that's line A, and then I make a line parallel to it, or make it look like it is, because we didn't prove it yet, line B. I'll put a line C cutting through them and make a box 
by line A and C. So if A is perpendicular to C and B is perpendicular to C, so let's put a right angle there, okay. then line A has to be parallel to line B, is what it says. <clears throat> Anybody still need this? Okay. Good. Okay. Now we have all the ways to list that two lines are parallel. To prove that two lines are parallel. One is if corresponding, if you have congruent, here's another way to write it, congruent corresponding angles, then you're going to have some parallel lines. If you have congruent alternate interior angles, then you've got to have some parallel lines. Third way, if you've got congruent alternate exterior angles, then you've got parallel lines. Another one is not about congruent. It's if consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then you've got parallel lines. And last, two lines perpendicular to the same line, then you've got some parallel lines. Anybody need this still? Oh, wait, yes, I thought so. I write a little fast sometimes. Okay. All right, now, if you want, um, before I do that proof, I just was thinking about the top of this page. Um, we might have wanted to label that proving lines parallel continued and that's up to you you don't have to write that i just thought maybe you'd want that on that page because it's continuation of the previous page all right then down at the bottom we're going to do an example of a proof now very important that we understand that we have been given A is parallel to B. That is not one of the things we just discussed. We That's our old stuff that we did in 3.2. We have been given line A parallel to line B. So I'm going to highlight the ones that are parallel. We're going to be proving line X parallel to line Y. It's They're not, you can't say they're parallel yet. So we're going to prove that they are parallel. So we're going to use the fact that we're given A parallel to B and angle 3 is congruent to angle 1. That's also given. And I'm going to go mark angle 3 congruent to angle 1 in my diagram. Once it's in the proof, you can mark it on your diagram. So, so far, my given I marked on the diagram and the other given I marked on my diagram. Next. Does angle 1 is congruent to angle 2? Well, these lines are parallel, the green ones. So based on what we already learned in 3.2, if you have parallel lines, okay, parallel implies that those angles, which are what kind? Corresponding. Yep. Corresponding angles, congruent. Or you could write the corresponding angles theorem or postulate. Angle two, 3 and 2 are congruent. Now, check out these two lines. You've got line 2 that says 3 and 1 are congruent. You've got line 3 that says 1 and 2 are congruent. So now you can say 3 and 2 would be have to be congruent by making a substitution. Now, if you wrote transitive, that would be acceptable as well. 
substitution or transitive. You don't have to write them both, whichever one you find you're comfortable with and will remember. All right, now that you have angles three and two congruent, let's look at the diagram. So you gotta look at your diagram to know what's going on. So two and three, what kind are they? Two lines X and Y. So that line X now has to be parallel to line Y. What kind of angles would two and three be? Alternate on the outside of those lines. So you're ignoring this part over here. You're looking over here. So two and three are alternate exteriors and we've got them congruent. So if you have alternate, and you don't have to write if, but I did just because I'm saying it. If alternate exterior, EXT, angles are congruent, that means you've got lines that are parallel. So that implies parallel lines. You see the difference between line three and five. Three, we were using the fact that there were parallel lines, while five is the converse, it's flip-flop because we're proving that lines are parallel. Okay, very important that so you have it in the right order. You could write the alternate exterior angles converse, but I'm thinking this would be easier. I'm not talking to that thing. Okay, that's it for the ISNs. Let's go to the packet on 3.5. Okay, this is your common core standards. And I have a little cartoon here. Did you know that parallel lines never meet? One caveman says the other. And then he, um, this guy says, I have five clams that say that they do. I guess they trade clams. There must be prized possessions back in those old days. And he says, okay, you're on. Here, take a stick and I'll take a stick. I don't know, this guy's acting weird. But anyway, he says to stop it. And then they go and they start drawing their parallel lines in the sand. So they walk and they walk and they walk. I didn't even see any. Go away. Okay, so he draws these parallel lines going on and on and on. And then they look back and said, see that? They meet. Give me your five, five clams. Guy's like confused. So he, he had to give him his clams and then he walks back and he keeps walking and walking and walking and he finds out they didn't meet. Well, that's kind of not very bright of him, right? Because what are you thinking when you look here? It looks like it, but they didn't. Um, it's just because you get so far away. They may take an art class and done perspective drawings. It's kind of like that, where you'd make, you know, you draw a perspective to try to make things look like they're further away. But anyway, he tricked them. I know it's a little silly, but we'll move back on. All right, so here's where you got to fill in. We're just going to repeat the theorems that we already discussed. If two lines are cut by a transversal, so the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are going to be parallel. You just have to fill in parallel. Next, we're going to use and do an example. Find the value of x that makes line m and n parallel, and then the second part b makes a and b parallel. So for this one, the theorem that we're going to be using is that if these two angles were congruent, <clears throat> they are corresponding. So we're going to be using corresponding angles converse, which says corresponding angles congruent, then we get parallel lines. So what we're going to do to make sure the lines are parallel is we're going to set 2x plus 3 equal to 71. Okay, we'll do the algebra quick. Subtract 3. 2 times x is 68. And divide by 2. I don't know why this is on my computer. And it won't go away. Go away. There. Dividing by 2, we get 34. All right, and then B, these are also corresponding. So it's the same reason. If corresponding angles congruent, then we're going to have parallel lines. So we're going to set those equal, 5x minus 7 equal to 98. 
I'm sorry if I did go too fast for someone. I'll make sure we're okay. I can go back to the last one if you need me to. Add seven each side, we get five times X equals 105. Divide both sides by five, we get 21. Okay, does anybody need the last one again? I just thought I heard somebody frustrated there. That was, again, corresponding angles, congruent, then you have parallel lines. Right. All right, this one is alternate interior angles converse, and we'll do an example. If two lines are cut by a transversal so that the alternate interior angles are congruent, the lines have to be parallel. Goes in your blank. And alternate exteriors, you're filling in, again, that if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then you have parallel lines. Okay, keep going because we went through these already. Consecutive interior angles says supplementary will imply parallel lines as well. So that would mean that if angle three and angle five are supplementary, meaning the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle five equals 180, then the lines would be parallel. And the perpendicular transversal converse, we get to draw a picture. So let's make a couple of parallel lines. and a cut by a transversal, call the lines A and B, and the one that cuts through them C. Okay. And that's just saying if these are right angles, That would be A perpendicular to C and B perpendicular to C, then A is parallel to B. You had to fill in the word parallel too. All right, so we've got five ways to prove that lines are parallel. Now we're going to do a proof. This is your second example. All right, if in the figure, if A is parallel to B, so they're giving us that. And this is, I think, the same one we did in the ISN, except I think it might be in a different order this time. Because it doesn't say angle one is congruent to angle three, which is the other given. It says angle one is congruent to two. And that's because of these lines being parallel. So if parallel lines, parallel implies corresponding, those would be corresponding angles, would be congruent. That's why they can say that they're congruent. Then it says angle one is congruent to angle three, which is given. Now I'm gonna go mark it on my picture with the same arc mark as the other two. Okay, now we can say two and three are congruent and that's not because of alternate interior angle or alternate exterior or corresponding or anything. It's because of these two statements. So if you take one is congruent to two and one is congruent to three, you can now say two and three are congruent by substitution or the transitive property. Okay, now we're trying to prove the lines parallel again. So now we're gonna say something like, if whatever kind of angles we've got here, which are gonna be alternate on the X, Interior. They're outside of the lines. We're trying to prove X and Y are parallel. 
Now line X is parallel to line Y because alternate exterior angles congruent means you've got parallel lines. Has to be in that order. So again, keep saying, I'm going to repeat it again. This is different than this. The, the line two and line five are different. Line two was writing something based on parallel lines being given. We're proving lines parallel. Then it has to be one of the converses where you end the, with parallel lines, not starting with it. Here you start with it because it was given. Okay, number three, you're given angle one congruent to angle two and angle one congruent to angle three. So that means angle two is congruent to three, again, by substitution or transitive. And then now A, line A, oop, I got to find out where line A is, it's up here, would be parallel to line DC because two and three are alternate interior angles to them here and here. So if alternate interior angles are congruent, then we've got some parallel lines. That was quick to prove AB parallel to DC. But you can't have parallel first. It has to be in this order. Okay, now we've got scrambled up reasons on this proof, but I'm going to number them to match the corresponding statements. Okay, angle one and five are complementary is something that's given. So for I'll put a one on the first given. Angle two and six are complementary, also a given. Second given. Now it's also given that angle five is congruent to angle six. All right, let me mark that on my picture. Five congruent to six. I couldn't really mark supplementary. So that would be the third given, which is, oh, I got to slide my picture down. There we go. Right here, three. Okay, now, angle one's congruent to angle two. We were given some angles. I got to read these. Angle one and five are complementary. Angle two and six are complementary, which is in my proof. Now, angle five is congruent to angle six by the congruent complements theorem okay so angles comp what it says is angles complementary to congruent angles are congruent that's the one right here so that's number four so i can mark angle one and two congruent to each other And then angle one and two are corresponding angles by definition of corresponding angles, which happens to be right to the right. So that's number five. And now, if corresponding angles are congruent, then some lines are parallel. That's going to be how we prove a line AD parallel to CF. So the first line is number six. All right, next problem we've got is, I'm going to go through number eight. Not good for that. Find X so that line L is parallel to line M. Show your work and identify the postulates. So first I'm going to use what kind of angles are here and here when they jump over the transversal. Alternate interior. So if alternate interior angles Oops, I forgot the T. Alternate interior angles congruent. That means we've got some parallel lines. So we're going to use that to set them equal. 3x plus 15 is equal to 90. Subtract 15 from both sides. Your equal sign. 3 times x equals 6. Is that... 75, yeah. And then divide by 3 on both sides. We should get x is 25.
Example six. Does anybody still need this? Okay, example six. If you were looking at these angles, they are in the same position. So if corresponding angles were made to be congruent, then we would have some parallel lines, which is also called the corresponding angles converse. I think writing this means more to us. So we're going to set these equal as well. 5x plus 20 would be equal to 70. Subtract 20 from both sides. 5 times x would equal 50. Divide both sides by 5. And we get x is 10. Okay. Number seven, what kind would these be? Or what kind are they relationship to the lines? They're on the outside and other sides, so alternate exteriors. So alternate, if we make them congruent, if we make alternate exterior angles congruent, then we would have parallel lines. So 5x minus 5 has to equal 6x minus 20. Do not add 5x and 6x. They are on different sides of the equal sign. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. I bring down the minus sign with the 5. So minus 5 and negative 5 equals x minus 20. Next, we need x alone, so we have to get rid of subtraction of 20 by adding 20 to both sides. And negative 5 plus 20 is 15. It doesn't matter that you says 15 equals x or x equals 15. You didn't have to rewrite it. I just did. Okay. And the last example, and then you're going to try some problems on your own. Find x, so l is parallel to m. All right, first I look and I see that they're inside the lines that I want to make parallel, and they alternate. So this would be alternate interior angles being congruent would give me my parallel lines. So most kids would start with 4x plus 20 equals 6x. I need to subtract 4x from both sides. So that leaves me with 20 on the left of the equal sign and 2x on the right. <coughs> Just divide by 2 and we get 10 for x. All right, the next part is the homework. So you got to try using these theorems. Tomorrow we are going to start going over slope and graphing lines. Where is that?